Hello, my name is Tess. I'm the founder and owner of Cottage in the Hills, the online homeware store where you can find lots of pretty things to turn your house into a home. This morning I'm going to teach you how to make some Welsh cakes. So it's really simple to make Welsh cakes um, and not many ingredients are needed. You need eight ounces of self-raising flour, four ounces of soft butter or margarine. I tend to use something like stalk, uh, three ounces of brown sugar, a pinch of mixed spice, egg and a touch of milk if required. Okay, now first thing is to um, mix your flour and the soft margarine together um, and you just rub it with your fingertips until it becomes breadcrumbs. Now this is one of those processes that could take quite a while. I'm using one of our new stoneware bowls here um, which we've just recently added to the range and because it's got a nice wide lip it makes it actually really practical for doing things like this. Um, but I also use it as a fruit bowl or as a salad bowl so it's got many uses. What I really like about this bowl though is um, it's not completely um, flat, it's got a bit of texture on the surface. And you can see here the other ingredients I've got um, are in the smaller bowls. It's also got that nice brown edge on the rim. You can see it's starting to come together like breadcrumbs now. And you just keep rubbing it with your fingertips until all the margarine, all the butter has been blended in. So this is a really good recipe to do with children as well, because I was making this from a very early age. One of the things I used to love when I was baking when I was little is taking tea out to my dad in the field when he was doing kettle binding or something. It's a bit of a treat to be allowed to go out and have tea outside. Okay, so it's nearly come together now. See, it does start to look like breadcrumbs. go. You just rub it off your hands and then I just need to give my hands a so quick wash. the consistency of breadcrumbs in there, we're going to tip in your dried fruit and your soft brown sugar uh, and we're going to add an egg. I'm going to give it a good mix together. I tend to do this with a knife initially. Before I get my hands back in there again. Makes it a bit less sticky. Excuse the dogs in the background. They seem to make themselves at home. starts to come together. Basically you're trying to make a bit of a dough. Squeeze it up there. Use just one hand and start forming it into a ball. This wide rim is really handy. It gives you something to hold when you're using the bowl. In fact, I don't think we're going to need much milk today because it's quite... It depends on the size of your egg, but sometimes it comes together a lot quicker. tend to do my rolling out using um, Baker Glide, which is something I've discovered since having my Arga. Um, and I use it for a number of reasons. It makes it, um, gives you a bit of a non-stick surface, which is better for rolling. Also, um, it's easier to clean, which I prefer, so there's less mess afterwards. Okay, so the bowl's almost clean, everything's moved off there, so we just put that to one side. And then we flour our surface and a bit of flour on there. Just put that in. Now roll it out to about um, roughly about a centimetre, centimetre and a half. Might need to add a bit more flour just to stop it sticking. Once it starts to stick to your rolling pen, then you know, just put a bit more on there. Uh, 
And then this is another bit where you can get your kids involved if you want with cutting out the shapes. And again, another bit of baby glue because I'm actually going to cook them on here. Cut out your rounds. You can do different sizes in these if you want. Pop them on there. And in the background you can hear that soft snuffling noise of a Frenchie. There we go. Okay, so I've got them on the baked loaf. Now um, I'm going to cut them on the right hand side on my arga. I've got arga pads on the top of my lids and I find these are really good for keeping the heat in. Um, and also because I've got nice shiny stainless steel lids, it stops them getting scratched because people can't um, avoid the temptation of putting something on top of them all the time. So just put my pad onto there, lift the lid up, and take them over and put them straight on there on the baker glide. Now obviously if you haven't got an uh, arga, you can use something like a, a plate on the top of your hob. And basically what we wait for is for the tops to start rising. They start to look a little bit spongy on the top here. Um, as I said, these are something that people tend to eat as soon as they're warm because that's when they taste the nicest. So starting to get look a little bit puffy now. We'll just check underneath. Yeah, perfect. So just slide your spatula under and flip them over. Now this is where you need smell vision because they start to smell really nice when they're cooking. And give them another couple of minutes and then they'll be ready to serve. So they smell like they're about done. So just flip them over and check. Yep, nice and brown there. So we'll pop them onto the plate. Okay. Give them a few minutes to cool down and then we can tuck into those. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to make Welsh cakes. Um, to find some of the products that you can see today, you can go online to www.cottageinthehills.com. Thank you for watching.